Hello, friends. Thanks for joining us. Please smash that subscribe button. Uh, the channel has grown so much. Thank you very much. Benny, where can they find us on social media? Yeah, you can find us. We're on, uh, find us first at Ray Benny Sports on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, everyone's favorite TikTok. And don't forget, check us out on Reddit and uh, subscribe to us on your uh, favorite podcast provider. Yeah, and leave us a review or something. Leave us yeah. five stars if you want, uh, please. Let's talk about some Blue Bombers. Then we're going to get to CFL uh, in week 10. Uh, but Bombers playing the Elks. Let's do a preview. What boxes need to be checked for the Bombers to win the game? I'll go first. Mine are short, execution, and discipline. Uh, that's really the only way I see Edmonton hanging around if they can't fulfill that. Uh, and if Edmonton has a chance of winning. Like, I don't mean to sound like the ultimate fanboy, but just looking at how these two teams are playing, looking at their roster, looking at their coaching, looking at their stats, uh, the Bombers have them beaten in every facet of the game. So just execute and be disciplined. Yeah, really just show up, right, and play their game. I mean, we've seen it already this season, Bombers losing to Ottawa, right? It can happen uh, any given Sunday, right, kind of thing. Yeah, um, of course. But if they get that offense going like they did last week, Edmonton's in trouble. Because uh, I don't think Edmonton's got the offense to keep up with the Bombers, uh, even with Trey Ford starting. So no. give give Cloros that protection like you had last week. Uh, Six-man O-line, see how that goes. Um, get that running game going. You know, we want to see that running game early and and just pound the Elks into the ground. And really, they'll have no chance. The Bombers D, I don't see having an issue here. Just, you know, maybe Trey Ford with his legs, kind of seeing what he can do. But yeah. once they're used to that, I think uh, I I don't think this game will be an issue. Now, it's a matchup nightmare for the Elks. Uh, Bombers have scored the second most points in the league. Edmonton has scored the least, averaging just above 13. Bombers allow the second least points per game. Edmonton has allowed the second most points per game. Uh, Winnipeg averages the most yards offense per game. Edmonton averages the least amount of yards. Like, I can go on and on. And we just saw the Winnipeg O-line dominate a BC D-line, giving up zero sacks. Uh, and Edmonton has the second least sacks in the league. It's just not a good matchup for Edmonton. No, and the, the only thing I could see is the Bombers having a bit of a letdown after last week, right? They they laid it all on the line last week, came out uh, and beat BC down. Um, sometimes that leads to, hey, we just beat the second best team. We're one of the better, better teams in the league. Now we're playing the worst team in the league. Uh, yeah. We could probably take this easy and coast. I know it's not the Bomber way at all, but sometimes that just ends up creeping in. So Hopefully they don't do that. The, the Elks coming off a bye too. So they had two weeks to kind of figure something out. Yeah. Hopefully something, make it an entertaining game. Yeah. I don't know what they figured out with the Bombers looking at their tape. I'm, I'm sure there's something there, you know, they're professionals. They'll find something, but yeah, you know, and I mentioned discipline. The Bombers are the least penalized team in the league. Giving up, like giving up, getting, I don't know what you want to call it, about six penalties a game. Yeah. Like if, if you're not allowing the other team to sustain their drives through penalties, you're good, especially with a young QB like this. If you're giving him free yards, yeah, maybe they might stick around and maybe it might bite you in the ass like it did against Ottawa. <clears throat> yeah. But uh, I just don't see it happening. Uh, yeah. Too much change going on on the outside or too much uncertainty. Never mind change as well. Yeah, especially since the last time they played, right? And that was a fairly close game until what? Middle, third, fourth quarter kind of thing where the Bombers kind of took over. But they only won by two scores in that game. Um, yeah. So now we see them a few weeks later and they're on a different trajectory. I mean, the Bombers have gone up. The Elks are still kind of going down kind of thing. So you expect it to go the same way, you know, and, and have the Bombers do dominate. Just like you said, the Elks had the had the buy, watched them film, figure things out. After last week, they may have tossed whatever they figured out and because they saw different things and different looks by the Bombers last week. So, yeah, it'll be a tough game for the Elks and another one at home. 22? Oh, I have to say I'm a little concerned and also encouraged in a weird way about what Trey Ford said this week. Uh, he said, I think we just need to get the ball to our receivers and make plays. Uh, I'm like, man, is this kid going to start gunslinging the ball willy nilly and putting up 50, 50 balls and hoping for the best. And you know what? Maybe if he does, maybe it might be a way to crack the Winnipeg defense. Maybe they're not expecting it. Maybe they're like, okay, he's not going to take a lot on his shoulders and they, he might surprise him early. Who knows? Might be yeah. interesting. Yeah, I think that's how they're going to have to do it, right? If they're going to get some points in this game, get it early, throw the Bombers on their heels. Because I, I, I guarantee you the Bombers are kind of just expecting if they can keep him in the pocket, everything's going to be good, right? They'll, they'll negate his running ability and 
he didn't show that he was one of the strongest passers last year, but we'll see what he can do. And, but if he can complete some early balls and maybe get some early touchdowns or even a touchdown, uh, that could definitely help his confidence. And the Bombers just, they got to squish that confidence early. Like they did to Dane Evans last week. Yeah. Yeah. Can't let him get in any kind of rhythm or any kind of comfort level. Uh, you, you mentioned like pressure and pocket. It's like, you do got to rush this guy and you can't yeah. tell Jeff Coat or Jefferson to lay off. So you kind of really are depending hard on uh, Jake Thomas and Ricky Walker to set the middle of the field. So, you know, Trey Ford doesn't have any escape routes through the middle. Once Jefferson and Jeff Coat do get the pressure, they got to just stay strong and make sure they don't allow any gaps and make any mistakes where Trey Ford can take it another eight, 10 yards and tire out the Winnipeg defense, because that, that's also what happened against Ottawa. They yeah. weren't making crazy plays. They are taking little five yards, seven yards, whatever the bombs were giving them, and then Crum would take it for another 10, 15-yard run and tire out that defense. Yeah, so yeah, those linebackers are going to need to be ready for the Bombers as well. We expect uh, Big Hill needs to have a, a good game containing or following or watching and seeing where Ford is, you know, at all times kind of thing. Yeah, they might have a little bit of spy action on him. They didn't do it on Crum, you know, and then who did it on Crum? Was it Calgary, I think? Mm-hmm. You know, or someone did, and they kind of, maybe it was Hamilton, actually, and they kind of contained him and made him look around um, and look for a pass downfield. I think they only rushed three and had a guy kind of hanging back there, so we'll see what the Bombers end up doing. But, I, yeah, I don't see the Bombers just rushing three and hanging a guy back. They're still going to be aggressive. Yeah, and they do have the talent where maybe they can do that. Yeah. Maybe they can do that once in a while. Different looks. Oh, yeah. Who's going to have a big game against the Elks and why? I'm going to go back to the running game for the Bombers. And and I think Brady Oliveira is going to have a, a, a great game here. Um, last time he played the Elks, he went over 100. But a lot of that was third, late fourth, or fourth quarter, kind of late third or uh, fourth quarter. Um, so I expected a little bit early, maybe to start pounding it, it early with that run game. Uh, BC have given up or sorry, Edmonton has given up uh, 100 yards to BC, Winnipeg, and Hamilton in their last three games. So there should be some lanes and some openings for Oliveira. So this could be one of those games where he needs where he starts off hot and ends off hot. I agree with you, brother. The Elks are giving up 141 yards rushing per game. This could very well be a career game for Oliveira. Yeah. Honestly, if they played like last week and if they're playing that heavy tight end set to open up running holes against this defense... Oy, oy, oy. It could be a big game for Brady Oliveira. I mean, hopefully they use some of those, sorry, those, some of those looks of the, you know, the six O line and Elks maybe are expecting pass in that situation. Uh, a la last week kind of thing. Right. And then this week, Hey, let's yeah. throw Oliveira instead kind of thing. So. Which Elks do the bombers need to keep their eyes on? Uh, we we um, let's go with Brown, the running back. They do have issues stopping the run sometimes. And he is a very good running back against a, behind a, a horrible O line. I, I should call them horrible. They're not performing very well. I'm sorry. But uh, yeah, I, I, I do like the running back, Brown, Kevin Brown. Sorry about that. Uh, and I think he's one to watch. Yeah, I'm going to go with Trey Ford. Uh, all eyes on him for this one, basically, right? If he can. Make plays with his legs, uh, move around that pocket. That might also open up the run game for Brown as well. Um, I think Manny Arsenal is back at least. Eugene Lewis doesn't look like he's back, so no. a, a little bit of help there. But you know, if he had Eugene Lewis, it would it would be even better, obviously. But uh, yeah, Bombers got to contain uh, contain Ford and should have a good game. Yeah, they have had issues against mobile quarterbacks that can extend yeah. the play. Like even for Jardo this year, right? Yeah. Like I know exactly. he only scored three points, but he had some success with his legs and moving at avoiding sacks. When, especially when he seemed like he was wrapped up, oh. you know, he still got away and ran, ran off for 20 and you're like, what the heck? This is not normal for the Bombers D, right? Yeah. So absolutely. Yeah. Can the Elks win this? Uh, no. <laughs> no. See, if they could, what would they have to do then? To win this, because I don't think they could win this either, obviously, from the statements we've made. But if they did have a chance, and they do, any given yeah. Sunday, like you said, or Thursday, yeah. Yeah. Uh, what do they have to do to win? That Edmonton D has to contain this bomber O, keep the score low like they did last time they played, and Edmonton's going to have to finish off some of their drives uh, for touchdowns. And they, they had 
they've been shut out twice this this year by BC, right? So yeah. new guy running a show this week. So that offense has got to kind of keep up with the Bombers offense, but the Elks D has to slow down that Bomber offense. Last week, I said the Bomber O-line had to have the game of their lives. I think this is, if Edmonton has any chance, the O-line there has to have the game of their lives uh, because they're not a very good O-line, like I just said. Uh, the, when they played BC, their last game, when they got shut out yet, yeah, that was the last game, right? Yeah. Ugh, so yeah. they're coming off a shutout. Yeah. <laughs> uh, BC generated 42% pressure on plays against Edmonton. That's a lot. And the Bombers' D-line is very comparable to BC's. Yeah. So if they can protect Trey Ford and not, you know, if get design running plays going and keep him upright long enough so he either extends plays or takes it off himself, that's what they do to win. And like you said earlier, that opens up Kevin Brown in the running game as well. Kevin Brown? Yep. Kevin Brown. The, the one thing is as well, right? Uh, Jarius Jackson, right, is the OC now? He is. So, and now you got a new quarterback. So there's not a lot of film there for the Bombers to kind of look at and see what they're going to maybe do on offense, right? And, la- you know, yeah, you had four, a few games from Ford last year, but Jackson wasn't his OC. So, you know, they, they, they the Elks could get the Bombers early uh, yeah. until the Bombers kind of figure out what's going on. So it'll be interesting. What, First what quarter will it, be interesting. What is encouraging about the relationship with Jarius Jackson and Ford is that you're already hearing that Ford is like nixing plays in practice. He's like, yo, this doesn't work for me. I can't execute this well or whatever he's saying. And he has input into an offense that's designed around him. Yeah. Which is great. Which is what you want for a young quarterback. You want to be yeah. comfortable. Bomber fans, put your thoughts below. Elks fans, if you're listening, put your thoughts down below. Be nice to each other. Critical questions for each team in the CFL, west to east, back and forth. Let's start with the west. Go ahead. Let's start with Winnipeg. Uh, Will the same offense show up for two weeks in a row? You know, we saw last week. We were excited. It was fun to watch. They were unstoppable. Hopefully they can do that again, and we'll see that same type of offense and maybe more of a balanced offense with the running and the passing. But I just just want to see that dominating kind of offense here again. Yes. What was the question again? Will the same offense show up for two weeks in a row? Yes. Toronto, is it worth playing Chad Kelly? It's an ankle injury, and those can linger if they're not fully healed. Like, even sprained ankles, those can be lifetime injuries because oh, yeah. they just linger if they don't fully heal, and it just makes your ankle weaker. So I think with their bye week coming up and their last bye week, I think you mentioned that last episode, yeah. their last yeah. bye week, they have 10 games straight to finish the season. Yeah. Why not make sure that ankle's set? You're playing Ottawa. Don't mean to disrespect Ottawa, but you're 7-1 and one in the East. I think they should sit on I don't think it's worth playing Chad Kelly. Yeah, six and one. Remember, they didn't go seven and oh, zero last. That's week. right. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, football <Yeah>. gods. <laughs> totally agree. Uh, let him sit. Let him rest. Get that ankle healed up because yeah, you need him more for the stretch run. I, I don't think they're going to get challenged for first in the East really unless they start tanking themselves, kind of thing. Mm. <laughs> uh, let's go with the uh, Bombers opponent, Edmonton. Will the home losing streak end this week? No. That's all I got to say there. It won't. I'm sorry, Edmonton. <laughs> Much respect to, uh, um, you know, uh, a pillar franchise in the CFL, but it's not happening this year. Ugh, so disappointing. That logo is pretty fire, though. Yeah. You know what? I feel like we were talking about like, like this when the Bombers played Ottawa, and look what happened there. <laughs> we might have to maybe flip this around a little bit somehow. Do you want to restart the episode? No. It wouldn't okay. change anything I said. Sorry. It's the truth, though. <laughs> uh, I know. I know. <laughs> Hamilton is replacing Condell the answer. Uh, not with the QB situation as it is right now, but Milanovic can definitely breathe some off- some life into that offense. He's a proven commodity in the CFL offensively. He's groomed some quarterbacks, uh, Zach Claros being one. Trevor Harris being another. So he understands the game. He understands it from a QB's perspective. Uh, I, I, you know what? Maybe it might help with Powell. Yeah. You know, to, to, he's, again, I mean, he's a young QB. Maybe he can groom him and help him uh, with the learning curve of the Canadian game. So I don't think it'll help now, but I think long-term, 
at the end of the season, they'll be winning games, but it might be too late. And be, but then at that point, it's, it'll be interesting to see what they do if Steinhauer uh, survives another bad season altogether, or if it's all for naught, you know, unless Milanovic gets the job as head coach next year or something. But it, it might not be too late because yeah. if you look at the standings, this might be the first time ever that both Alberta teams miss the playoffs. Yeah. Ever. Wow. That is crazy. <laughs> next question ah uh, saskatchewan mason fine put up some good stats last week um but the always still kind of struggled scoring can they figure out how to generate more points and not rely on brett lother brett lother uh kicking field goals and kicking a 54 yarder for the win i don't see it coming up this week i think they'll have a tough time with that montreal d um, they'll need their D to be strong as well and keep it a low scoring affair. And maybe they'll, they'll squeak out another win. Um, but I think that O still needs, it's still a work in progress. Oh, big time. Big Which time. Is, Mace- you're halfway through the season, man. I know you got your backup QB, but even with Trevor Harris, they weren't scoring a lot. Mason fine showing some promise. But yeah, step forward for sure. Yep. Yeah. Uh, well, let's go with Montreal then. Are the Alouettes turning things around? You know, after losing three in a row against Winnipeg, BC, and Toronto, the juggernauts of this season, uh, the Owls have put together consecutive wins. They kept, they've kept, they kept their QB clean last game. Standback is starting to get some momentum. Uh, we already knew about their capable defense, and the team wasn't 100% healthy last week. So uh, I think we are seeing them cement themselves as, as the second place team in the East. And when they're healthy, I'd love to see that match up with Toronto. I don't know when they play next. But I think it was until the end of the season, if because I remember looking today. But maybe I'm thinking oh, about different teams. Oh, that or could maybe, be huge. Maybe they gotta have a, uh, They gotta have a matchup near the end of the season for sure. If CFL schedule makers have any sense, those two teams will be playing later on in the season. Without no, a doubt. Sorry, I was wrong. It was the Red Blacks that play the uh, Argos two times late in the season. So, so the Owls and Argos are not playing late in the season. They play. Yep, yeah, they do two times in September. Yo, but BC and Winnipeg aren't playing late in the season either. Well, it's October, right? So it's a little bit later than normal, but yeah, not normal, but later than that. I mean, schedule makers, y'all doing all right. Uh, who you got <laughs> next for questions? Sorry. Uh, Calgary. Um, will they continue to make the run game a more focal point of their O? Um, they're going to be playing a tough BCD this week. Pissed off BCD. Um they're going to have to use that run game to kind of slow that BC rush down and help Jake Mayer not mistakes. I still don't see Dickinson fully trusting and moving in on that run game. He's still more of that passing kind of guy. Come on. How much more proof do you need? <laughs> do you just beat the number one team in the league? Yeah. But I think he'll abound in it early, especially like, I mean, like we say, we got to go back to that bomber game, man, where they were running all over the bomber, 70 something yards in the first quarter. And then they stopped. Nonsensical. So I'm going to go with Ottawa. Can they get the ball in the end zone? Like, <laughs> and I just don't mean the goal line situation. Like <laughs> this team is second in the league in rushing. They are second in time of possession between BC and Winnipeg. And Lewis Ward leads the league in field goals with 26. They have that? to put the ball in the end zone as a touchdown. Like they'd be so much better. Yeah. Uh, like when, again, I'm sorry, Bobby Dice, much respect, but when they asked him, would he change anything about th- those decisions? He's like, no, nah, only yeah. on the kickoff following that. It's like, oh, sorry, but you got to have that killer instinct. Put the ball yeah. in the end zone. Yeah. That's, Don't that's be where, satisfied with field goals. That's where guys like say Andy Reid or stuff like that, that's where they excel because they're not afraid to go for it on fourth and one, basically for the NFL, right? You're on the one. You got a chance to win the game. And even if you don't get it, it's a long field. We don't have to rehash this because it just brings my blood pressure back up thinking about it. I know. And Ottawa's not even my team, really. So. I know the CFL <laughs> stats aren't the best, but I'd like to get some red zone stats percentage-wise there. Yeah. CFL stats aren't the best. That's an understatement. Oh, God. Whoa, what's the next one? This, they they should be ready by this. 2025. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> you know, maybe 26 then? Uh, we reveal it at the Winnipeg Grey Cup. Oh, jeez. Uh, BC, is Vernon Adams healthy enough to play? And can they bounce back from that drubbing last week? Um, all indications, it's looking like he is playing. I mean, he was dressed last week. 
They kind of need him. Dominic Davis, been in the league forever. He can't play QB. Uh, he's good at those third and ones, usually. Uh, he got stopped mm-hmm. last week. Um, I think that's his role, and that's really all you can trust him to do. So they need Vernon Adams back this week. Big game against Calgary. Another loss for BC here. Calgary inches closer, and Winnipeg could pull more away. That is going to be an interesting matchup with Adams coming back from injury and Calgary looking good, just being Toronto. Wow. Yeah, they're coming off that high, right? So exactly. Put your comments in the comment section below. Critical questions. Answer ours. Bold prediction. Which players will get the highest offensive and defensive PFF grades in week 10? Uh, I'll go first. I'll start with offense. I'll go Brady Oliveira. <laughs> Let me mention he'll have a day against the Elks. Again, maybe a career day. So uh I'm gonna go with Brady Oliveira against the league's worst rushing uh defense i i just got to point out to people who are listening and watching um we don't collaborate our notes at all before and i know we both talked about olivera before too but i'm picking olivera here as well um i got it in there like you said i expect him to have a big game you know i expect him to get between 100 and 150 yards in this game at least so i I see a resting on his shoulders early and and then just pounding it late yeah we're definitely not collaborating no. We're looking at the <laughs> CFL PDF stat sheet and seeing the numbers. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, greatest stats ever. Good oh, job, Uncle Randy. I just want to yell. <laughs> uh, defensive player, who do you got for defense? I'm going to go with Matthew Betts. He had an off week last week, got contained. Um, I think he's going to be all over Jake Meyer uh, and going to wreak havoc on that Calgary uh, passing game. That's a good one. I was thinking Matt Betts too as well. He wants revenge. Oh, he yeah. wants to avenge that zero uh, sack perf- uh, performance. I'm going to go with the DB from the Argos, Robertson Daniel. Uh, he's Early in the season, he had that three interception game where he brought one back to the house against the Lions. Yeah, I know they're not playing against the Lions, but he's one of those explosive players, and he's great against the run. I think he's leading the Argos in tackles, so I think they'll have plenty of opportunities to make plays against the Red Black. So I'm looking for Robert Danielson to get the highest PFF grade. Fans, but you're predictions on which players will get the pff grade yeah that's predictions i guess it is yeah let's talk about predictions <laughs> let's get quick and dirty uh about the predictions bombers and elks who you got winnipeg <laughs> not much more to say we've already said a lot <laughs> yeah they're too much they're too much yeah. right now let's go to the next game friday night football do they still say friday night football tonight i don't know i, I have to check that out they never should. tune in early enough i just go when, once the game starts Oh, they should do a retro presentation with Friday Night Football. Da, 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 da. Bring back those like, Wendy's commercials. Oh. Or the... Um, no, And the, the kick to win. Yeah. That, Bring back I, the guy who I, won the kick to win. Did somebody win it? Remember? He, in Toronto in the Sky Dome? And then someone signed him to uh, audition for a kicker, didn't it? Oh, no. I don't Dance. remember. Man. Put your comments below in regards to Wendy's kick to win and that dude who won it. And then someone invited him to camp. I wouldn't be surprised if Brendan Tamman. Who knows? I don't know. <laughs> With his napkins? Oh, you went there. <laughs> Rough Riders, Owls. Uh, I'll go with the Owls. They're starting to find their stride, like I mentioned earlier. So, And they're at home. Owls uh, for me as well. Plus, we get to see Fajardo against Saskatchewan. You know, he's going to be loving that and be all over it. Uh, he missed practice today with a shoulder injury. So hopefully that's nothing too serious. Um, I don't think Montreal D is just going to be too tough for Mason Fine. Sean Lemon looked great last week, so oh. he'll continue on this week. Jason Moss wants some revenge, too. And Daryl Walker got cut, eh? Yeah. I, apparently, you didn't even realize he's been out for seven games with an knee injury, so I guess, you know, played two games and been out, so. Yeah, I don't know if he was going to rush to sign him. No, Montreal before this game. Ooh. Stampeders, <laughs> Lions, uh, VA is back, and the Lions will be focused. The D-line will be lights out at home, I think. I'll take the Lions. I agree. I agree with uh, Vernon Adams back as long as he's healthy. BC already won the first time they played, so this team's going to be ticked off, pissed off, BC are after last week, so they're going to take it out on someone. Last matchup, Sunday evening matchup. Why don't they play those earlier in the day? I don't <laughs> get it. Red Blacks at Argos, who you got? If Chad Kelly's playing, I'm taking the Argos. Probably, even if Chad Kelly's not playing, I'm probably taking the Argos still. But Chad Kelly's playing, no uh, easy win for the Argos. I agree. I'm taking the Argos to win in Toronto at BMO. Ottawa's still figuring things out. Uh-uh. 
Yeah, we thought Sorry, they were. Coach uh, Dice. Yeah, we thought they were on the uprise a few weeks ago, and then uh, two losses in a row, and oh, that third and one. CFL fans, put your predictions in the comment section below. Benny, you have anything to say to our friends? You know what? Thanks a lot for uh, listening and subscribing. Uh, leave us a comment. Let us know what you guys think, and have a good week. Enjoy CFL Week 10 action. Can't wait for the Bombers to play on Thursday. And like LeVar Burton says, in the meantime, in between time. No, that's Ed Whalen. I messed that up again. Uh, like LeVar, LeVar Burton, Burton said says, it time too. maybe <laughs> we'll see you next time. Get out of here. Cut. <laughs> Yo, let's play it. Start, bench, cut. Oh, boy. Tyrone Jones, Alfred Payton. Willie Jefferson, a lot of people were scared to answer this or refused to. Who are you going to? Wow, right on the spot. And you're recording me. Can I stop recording? No. Uh, Tyrone Jones, I'm starting. Okay. And then Willie Jefferson, I'm benching, right? And yeah. Peyton, I am cutting, I guess. I should have said cut. I should have said start, bench, train. Because when people see cut, they're like, oh, gosh. Yeah. I'm going to go Willie Jefferson start. I, I still think he's probably the most dynamic defensive player yeah. I've seen ever. And I don't mind rotating, putting Ty Jones in for a couple plays any which way. And I would have to trade slash cut Alfred Payton. And I think also just because the two previous guys are connected with Grey Cup wins. Yeah. There's more sentimentality in winning to those two. Alfred Payton was great, but he won championships in Baltimore and Montreal. Edmonton? Yeah, I believe. Uh, no, I don't know. Maybe Edmonton. I can't remember. Hey, friends and neighbors, don't forget to check us out online on Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter at Ray Benny Sports. And don't forget to check out our YouTube channel. Leave a like, leave a comment, tell us what you think.